we managed to drag Mark Ogden all the way down from the cold of Manchester to the cold of London, believe it or not, for the North London Derby. It was absolutely brilliant. Four goals is what we saw here at the Emirates. 2-2 is how it ended. Mark, I have to ask you, who's going to be the happier side now? Because some people found it hard to choose which one was going to win this. Well, if you go down 2-0 in the first half to your biggest rival, if you're Arsenal, you're really happy to get a draw out of that. Mm. I think that Arsenal feel like they've won the game, you know, because they were so bad in the first 25 minutes that you thought, here we go again, it's like, it's like Arsenal at Anfield, they can't defend, they can't think, they can't fight, and to be fair, in the second half, they, they turned it around. Obviously, Lacazette's goal in stoppage time was a big thing, but, you know, if you're a Tottenham fan, you feel you've lost this game, so it's a big, it's a big result for Arsenal for many reasons. That's true, and Arsenal absolutely turned things on in the second half. We were just looking at some of the stats, and we saw that up until the 80th minute, Arsenal had basically all of the possession on their side and I was telling them that I had not seen um, you know Bert Leno for any at all in that second half almost so looking at that now there are a couple of questions going on there Harry Kane spoke after the match we know that he did have a little penalty shout he said he felt that you know in another match he probably would have gotten it but in this one it wasn't that's just how it is what was your thoughts on it? I think you went looking for it. If you look at the, if you look at the slow motion, <laughs> you see that he kind of puts his leg into the challenge, mm. and he goes down. And then he has a bit of an exaggerated dive. So I think that was a that was a correct decision. We've seen some pretty weird decisions over the weekend across the Premier League, but I think that one today was didn't even need VAR. It was just a coming together of legs, and Kane went looking for it and didn't get it. And as I said, that Arsenal were definitely all over Spurs in that second half. So why don't we see some of that momentum in the first half? Is it just that they, they, they took some time to click? They just don't have, you know, the, the personnel to last 90 minutes with that kind of momentum? I just think Arsenal are one of those teams that they need to be going forward. You know, they can't defend. You've got David Luiz in the, in the back and he just wants to get the ball and run forward or took somebody's shirt. They can't defend. So when the ball is in their favour and Tottenham allowed them to get back into the game Tottenham almost said the second half you, you know chase the game if you want but that encouraged Arsenal to play to the strengths so when you do that with Arsenal especially here they're going to create lots of chances against you the best way to play against Arsenal is sit back hit them on the counter attack but Tottenham just sort of I won't say they put the white flag up but they, mm -hmm. I think they thought they'd won the game and that maybe the goal that Lacazette scored got into the heads a bit Spurs have had a great start to the season but you know Spurs you know led to their own downfall today well, you touched on the fact that, you know, that goal of Lacazette basically helped turn things around. And tactically speaking, a lot of people have been applauding how Unai Emery brought, brought on, um, you know, other players that really changed the game. Tactically speaking, you know, how impressed were you with Unai Emery's changes? I think it was bold, you know. He put on two attacking subs, Inington and Sevalos and Mkhitaryan. With Mkhitaryan, it was because Lacazette was feeling injured, so he didn't really have any choice. But, you know, some managers would have put a defender on, even though they were, you know, chasing the game. So he went for it, and he was rewarded for going for it. So... When you put in Sabalos and, and Mkhitaryan, you're not asking them to do any defend, any defend. It's certainly not Mkhitaryan because he can't defend. So I just think, yeah, Emery went for it. And I think fair play, you know, he, he didn't kind of settle for what some managers would settle for. He, he went for the result and got, and got a point out of it. And just two more points now before we wrap. The first one, you mentioned a name earlier on, and it has been a name that I got a lot of flack for, I guess, making fun of after last weekend. That is Davi Luiz. But here we are again. Mm. And I said last week, Arsenal fans, where maybe Davi Luiz might want to stay away from social media because he has become a meme or the butt of people's jokes mm. again today. What doesn't seem to be clicking for him? Or is it just that maybe he is past the David Luiz that we came to know and love? I just think David Luiz, because in every game, thinks he's playing on the beach. You know, and <laughs> in the sense that he's playing for the fun, you know, he's playing because he enjoys the game and it's, he doesn't have that tactical discipline that players need. And there are some games when you see David Luiz and he's brilliant, a, re a really good kind of attacking force. But today and last week, no. No, <laughs> Sorry. absolutely no. Sorry, Arsenal fans, on that one. And finally, let's just end on Spurs then, because of course the loss to Newcastle got a lot of Spurs pa fans panicking. Now, with this one, you said that Spurs could definitely take this one when you go 2 0 up as a loss as well. So, where do they go from here? They're just like an unhappy team at the moment. Mm. Whether they're still a hangover from the Champions League final, Ericsson's future is uncertain. Vertonga came back in today after a few weeks out of the team. There just seems to be an area of uncertainty, and the manager's not helping that because his kind of situation seems uncertain too. So, now if once the window closes on Monday, it might settle things down. But I do think Tottenham need to find a bit of stability and just trying to get back to what they're good at. And you went to the press conferences. Anything interesting from those? No, I think both saw it as international break and they're quite keen to get out of the building and have a few days off <laughs> like the rest of us. <laughs> That's true. Well, as Mauricio Pochettino did say um, in the press conference, the pre-match press conference that I went to last week, that he is set to have another meeting with Daniel Levy once the international transfer window is definitely closed in the rest of Europe. So it'll be interesting to see what comes from that window, but we know he will be breathing a massive sigh of relief that the window will be shut come tomorrow.
Well, thank you very much for watching ESPN on YouTube. For more sports highlights and analysis, be sure to download the ESPN app. And for live streaming, premium content, and let's not forget as well, ESPN FC, seven days a week. Subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.